vote on that issue. We came back into public session and voted on this. We came after mm -hmm. we. No, we didn't. Yes, we, we did. Yeah. Well, we it was asked to bring it back into public, but when we when this was voted on, it was voted on in non-public, and therefore I stayed clear of it because that is not the way it's supposed to be done. So I'm. Um, that vote is going to be changed because that was done in non-public. And then we brought it into public and, and did it. No, we didn't redo it. So it was just brought. Okay, we, we want to take it out of non-public and bring it into public. But it was voted on in non-public, and that is why I did not vote either way because that's not the way it's to be done. What is your recollection? To we sealed the minutes. Yep. Yeah. There were some issues in the non-public minutes that Gail needed to deal with and talk to particular people about, which she could not do if the minutes were sealed. Therefore, we took, I believe, three items right. and mm -hmm. put them in the public right. minutes, right. and we took a vote on that to right. do that. Mm -hmm. We and did. that was one so that he would get that. Uh, I don't recall that, but anyways, it was done yeah, we did take public. We did take a vote to bring three items forward from non-public to public so that but, Gail could deal with the issues. Okay, but it was done in non-public, and that's why I didn't vote. I didn't say anything because I w didn't want to vote either way because that shouldn't have been done in non-public to begin with. So that vote is going to be changed because I did not vote on that because it was done in non-public. We voted on it in public when we came back out. But it was done first in non-public. Yes, and we which had it, to... Which it should, should have not been. It should have not been done in non-public. Well, actually, it was, it was a, uh, a... I want it. I want the vote changed. It was done in non-public, and that's specifically why I said nothing, either yay or nay, because it was done in non-public. So to say that I voted for something that shouldn't have been done in non-public, that was done in non-public, no, I, no, that vote is going to be changed. If you wish it to be changed, we'll change it. Thank you. Do you recall me asking you earlier in the meeting if you didn't sit, because I kept saying, what do you vote, Steve? Do you remember me recall, recall me saying, if you don't say anything, I'm just going to assume that's an I? Well, it, that's a terrible thing to do. When you start assuming things, that okay, but she becomes did, more she trouble. did clarify that. I though. did clarify that. No, but all right, this, this, let's this just take, let's just have this uh, okay. Okay. A vote of four and one. Madam Chairman, uh, is, is Steve saying that you can't make a, a motion in non-public? Uh, what is your point? I understand your point about your wishing to show that you abstained from this vote. But what, what are you saying is illegal about it? You can't talk about that in non-public. Talk about what? Yeah, talk about what? I don't understand. A cell phone bill? Joe Williams. But it's, you we cannot discuss that in non-public. That's why we brought it out into the public. But the, the, my point is it was done in non-public. It was compensation to an employee. Wait, yeah. You can't do that. Well, that's exactly it's what non-public is right. supposed to be about. No, I, I disagree. I, I totally just There's only six specific things you can go in non-public for. Personnel. Which this is is personnel. Personnel. Student issues. Mm -hmm. This is uh, personnel. Uh, a cell phone bill? I, I, no, I disagree. Personnel. I disagree. Okay. It's actually a cell phone bill. It's really, it really has to do with a cell phone bill, not an individual. That's, it was an that's, individual was requesting compensation. Phone. For a cell phone bill. It's actually the individual that we discussed. It was his personal phone, personal bill. So it's easy. really the cell phone bill that was discussed. That's the whole point of it. So, Liz, you're the uh, person more f most familiar with the law. Do we just accept uh, this uh, 4 1 and go on? Accept 4 1, did you say? 4 and four 1. Are you going to exchange it? Oh, I just, yeah. uh, because He's it was done that way, I he just didn't want to. He, he abstained on that vote. Okay. So, there's a correction. Okay, that's fine. All right, four extension. Okay, anything else? No, no, no. Okay. What about the Kingswood High School one? 
Oh, well, that, I mean, I don't know. What do you do with that one? That's about a student, right? Mm -hmm. I thought you could, but then technically we, we went into non-public for personnel where a student is not personnel, so what do you do with that one? Well, student, the student falls should, under the same law. It's right. the same law. Same law. It's well, C. it's it, personnel, but the, a student's really not personnel. No, it's, it's a different C, category. Yeah. There are six categories, right. and student is one. Not on my sheet, but if you say so. Okay. Let's go on. Yes. We have the minutes of the 20th, I mean the uh, 7th corrected. Okay, old business. Oh, yeah. Let's vote on it. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, Make a motion to accept the minutes as amended. Can I have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. Old business. Anybody have any old business? I'd just like an explanation of the correction under transportation insurance. The transportation insurance line, you corrected that. Yes. What was the issue? There was a, the total bill was charged to transportation that split out between the different insurance lines. So, that was so Wakefield was getting charged the total bill? Right. Okay, so and that's that been corrected that's and that looks a lot better. Thank yeah. you. <coughs> okay, anything else for old business? Correspondence? Do you have anything? Financial reports. Uh, Andrew? We got your expense report that was run on as of March 28th. Any questions on the expense report? Yes, I had one. Would you please check all the FICA lines? Actually, I had Cheryl doing that. I asked her to do that this morning to look at the FICA and health insurance. Yeah, because the FICA lines aren't um, calculating. Uh, if you take the reporting period, <coughs> any current period, any of the numbers, and try to multiply it out um, by the percentage that it should be, they're not correct. Some of the issues that could be budding that up when you look at it is because uh, there's the insurance buyback, and that's FICA taxable. You're not seeing okay. that. You're not seeing that in the um, salary line. Okay. And you have some people that are taking out medical insurance, which is not FICA taxes. So it's kind of a combination of things not being taxed and other things that are being, being taxed. taxed. Okay. Well, we are looking at that because when I was looking at it, I noticed that the teacher's FICA was Yes, over that's budget. the one that's concerned me. Right. I think that was the only... Anybody else have any questions on any of the financial reports? Oh, um, transportation, gas, and diesel. That's not looking too good. We spent $9,500 in the current month. Uh, we only have $16,000 left for the remainder of the year. And we still have April, May, and June to go. So that looks like that's going to be overspent. It depends on where the... Um how the building cycle goes. I, I think what happened here that you see a lot for one month because it includes both part of February and March. Okay. Can so we check that out? Because yeah. that looks like that's going to be a concern. Yes. And I'd also like to find out if Tim could give us a comparison um, mileage wise and fuel wise the difference between what how, what we were doing before and the new transportation plan? I asked him for that. He wanted to wait and give it, because only been a few weeks. He was going to wait until the April vacation. You'll get like okay, a full good. month to see what it looks like. So we'll have something the first week in May, maybe? Yeah. Or the first meeting in May for that. Any other questions? For how me? is it working out discipline-wise? Are you seeing a, a reduction in discipline problems with the change in the kids being high school and elementary kids being separated? I can't say that there's been a significant change. We really didn't have that many issues with the high school kids 
on the buses with the, with the younger kids. I think more it was it was more comfortable for parents not to have such a huge age gap on the bus. Um, but as far as discipline reports or bus reports, I'll let Doug speak to that at the next meeting. Uh, but I can't say there's been a significant difference. Any other questions on the expense report? <coughs> any other questions on any of the other reports? Revenue, other no? I'm asking the board, I gave you a, a sheet of a proposed change to the expense report. Mm -hmm. What I'm trying to do is to make it more understandable is take out the column that says percent remaining because it really has no value. And replace that with the total of the current period. I'm sorry, reporting period and the encumbrance. So you can see what the total expenses so far hitting the expense report for the year. I like it. I like that format. How about the rest of the board? I really haven't <coughs> had a chance to look at it. No, I just so. just glancing at it. I like the bad figure there rather than the percentage. It just makes it clearer, I think, when you look at the expenses, but you know the total expenses without having to add mm -hmm. the two columns to see that it does equal when you subtract it from the budget columns. Right. Yeah, the consensus. Is it okay? Yeah, that's what I'm trying to find out. Do we have a consensus to continue this? Oh, I haven't really had a chance to look at it. So. Do you want to wait till the next meeting then? Yeah. We'll give you an uh, answer to the next meeting. Okay. Yeah. Can he do this for the next meeting yeah. then? Yeah. Okay. Try what do you want to change that to now again, Andrew? Just Take off the column the, that says percentage. The remaining in place, in place yeah, with what? The total of the Don't encumbrances and the actual year-to-date <coughs> expense, those two columns before the uh, percentage column. Because you're actually, when you look at the amount remaining, it's taking the budget less the reporting period less the encumbrances, but you're not seeing that total. I just think it makes it clear if you see the total of what your encumbrances and your reporting period equal. I think he gave you about? a sample. Yeah, he did. Steve, he gave you a sample to show oh, you what he paper. meant. Yeah. That one. It's just page one of the regular yeah, that's expense Yeah, I was report. trying to figure out why I got one, this one and then the one that was in the, that I got emailed is from the end of March and this was the, the end of April. Okay. So we'll get into the next meeting. School administrative unit. I have one more thing, Priscilla. Pardon? I have one more thing. Oh, go ahead. <laughs> Sorry, Andrew. We have a bill from Pearson Group for the um, power school. Mm -hmm. It wasn't budgeted because we didn't decide to do power school until last March and the budget was done back in November. So just so you know, um, the technology section will be over budgeted a little bit over by 20 About twenty-four hundred dollars is for, it's for the maintenance for the um, power school, the annual maintenance, which comes due, which is coming due or came due in March. We haven't paid it yet because we just got the bill in the middle of March, so it goes from March of twelve to March of thirteen. We knew this was coming. So it's paying for some of next year, quite a bit of next year. And we also talked about just as a reminder mm -hmm. that the money where we were talking about pulling it from would be from that assessment line, the guidance assessment line. Not technology? I, I didn't think we were taking it out of that because I know well, in the new budget, to that. Yeah. yeah, I knew when we were looking at breaking all that down, we were breaking those down into those areas, so. Uh, still what she's charged. saying, Priscilla, yeah. it's going to be charged to Technology. technology, but we were asking where it's is it coming from? Yeah, where, where, where it's coming from, for? just a reminder. Yeah. Okay. All right. So. Thank you. Okay. I just didn't want to think we were out there in the, that we did have a plan. Thank 
Okay, sounds good. Andrew, anything else? No, that's it for now. School Administrative Unit 64. I mean, you already know this, but I'm saying it for the public, okay? <laughs> um, last night, the SAU um, approved for us to go forward with a teacher professional growth plan. This is our evaluation process that we've been working on in the state. And so we'll be presenting that to the Department of Ed on May 7th. So I just wanted to have it out there. And we have posted it so that it's out on the call for all of the teachers. So. Else and you did confirm last night that the um, union members or the union representative had not bid against the current they were working collective on bargaining, that bargaining agreement as as we were going through it, and that's it covers that. Did you speak to Liz? I didn't speak to Liz okay. today. All right, but I know that they had the the contract out while we were they were writing. Yeah. So okay. The group, or there was actually a union rep there. There was that. union reps okay. there, one from each district, and they had each district contract out while they were working on it. Okay. Anything else? Okay, uh, attorney retainer fee. Yeah, explain and that. Priscilla and I looked at that together. Um, we do pay a flat fee of 500 a month, and in that includes the quick conversations, I would say. Um, but then we pay additional for specific um, cases or things that go beyond that. So it will show the 500 a month and then um, So we're currently calls. already doing that. We play, that's what we pay. Yeah. Yeah. They're not calling it a retainer, they're calling Call it, it a flat, flat fee. fee. But it, if if they call, if any, Gail calls any attorney in the office for general questions, that is covered under that five hundred dollars. Right. But specific cases or whatever, then you have a situation where you know you're billed accordingly. So, for example, when we were doing negotiations, that's kind of an additional separate, separate yeah. add-on. Mm -hmm. So we kind of have a have yeah. one, but they don't call it that. If we did nothing but call them on specific cases, would we still pay that five hundred? Yeah, yeah. That's your. That's the deal. That it's basically, you have them so that they are at you know when you need them at your beck and call. Kind of. But yeah. I've seen on invoices, minutes billed, which looked like, I would call short conversation. Is there a minute breakdown where it becomes longer than a short conversation? No, I looked at some of them, and some of the short conversations were you know, seven minutes, or thirty minutes, or sixty minutes, depending. And they were billed. But they were billed. But the, mm -hmm. that they actually billed under they, the they were billed under that five hundred dollars. So at a point in the year, fee. you might come to a point where that five hundred. I don't know if there's a up. limit or not. Five hundred a month, huh? Yeah. The hourly rate is what forty-five bucks. No. Oh no. no. It's probably hundred and forty-five. Yeah. 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 Find that attorney. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, you probably don't want to find that attorney. Yeah, you're right, Steve. <laughs> but I mean, what do you want to get? I always thought, well, you know, don't keep calling the attorney. It's costing us money. But if you're calling for general questions, it's really not because it's part of the fee. And if there's a, a limit, then the bills I looked at didn't reach that limit. No. And and it's like in some ways you want to call the attorney before you make a mistake and cost yeah. money. <laughs> But the good thing is it's under a flat fee as opposed to being billed each time they call the attorney. Yeah. So that was... I guess we'll have to look at the next bill. Yeah, yeah so look at the next bill. Are we still using the same one? Mm -hmm. It's a group. The same individual? It's a group. So it's different ones we different use things. different people for different things. So it's um, Barbara Lohman, Peter Phillips, um, Gordon Graham, um, Diane Garo. Diane Garo. Say that again. So Bronstein. Yep, Peter Bronstein. Peter um, Diane Garo. Diane Garo. Somebody else. It's escaping me. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, who are you missing? So you use different people for yeah. different things. 
like Peter Bronstein, his specialty is land and buildings and that kind of thing. So they each have their specialty, it's not whoever picks up the phone? True, they each have their specialty, some people, you know, but they all, all collaborate. I called on an issue today, not for you. <laughs> and um, he co collaborated with a few other people before he re returned the call. Okay. And sometimes we hire attorneys outside of that group. You would only do that if, like, maybe you would be represented. Okay. Like, then you might uh, mediation or uh, something special. It's not mm -hmm. just the typical. Okay. Bus monitor. Liz, were you the one that wanted the bus monitor on here? Yes, I did. That's what I thought. Inquiry as to whether we still employ bus monitors and how many do we have and how often do they ride and that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. We had two last year. Um, one was from our kitchen staff, and the other one I think was a para um, that were bus monitors. And you know, if you remember right last year, how often we advertised and how we tried to get people in and just could not. And they're no longer with us, so we no longer have bus monitors. Do you feel that we need them? You know, I sometimes I do and sometimes I don't. It, it's you know, it's really difficult when kids do things on the bus. Mm -hmm. Could you have prevented it? Mm -hmm. well, the chances are probably not. Does Doug still ride once in a while? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> He's a monitor. Doug does hop on the buses and ride home with the kids and then ride back with the bus driver if we need to. If we seem to be having a few more bus slips on that bus than normal, then he'll hop on that afternoon and ride back and forth and I tell you, that's probably a little more effective yeah. than, uh, it, well, some of them try to do some things, so Doug rides with them, so. <laughs> <laughs> so we need to talk about that part. Um, yeah, no. But um, I, I think that's become a little more effective than just having an adult who may sit up front and not see anything that's going on in the back, mm -hmm. and yeah. he kind of roams around. Well, the bus is moving. I didn't say that on camera. Doug is always <laughs> seated and very well behaved on the bus. Uh, student activity fund. Were you able to get Harriet in to extract that? We have not gotten Harriet in. And um, we were hoping that after we could get everything into the ADS correctly, which it's not in the ADS system correctly, and Harriet doesn't know that part right. of the ADS right. system. So, having her just balance what's going on in Quicken is really all we need her to do. Yeah. Uh, but working with uh, the technology part of ADS has been trying at best. Um, so Haven't that's been a long conversation and many meetings between Andrew, I, and Barbara trying to get through that and figure out what we yeah. can and can't do. When did we stop putting it in Quicken and start putting it in the ADS? Is that February? February is when they had the training for the um, yeah. student activity account. So Harriet could only get a report up until February. February. So our goal is, is to get, whether it be Harriet or Barbara, to get the account reconciled to February 29th, put those balances into ADS and then do March and, and April into the ADS system. Mm. It sounds good, huh? <laughs> it sounds good, but it, it's, it's been challenging on because what Andrew can see down there and what we can see up there, we were both confused. We had to put us both together to try to see it. We even had Gail in there looking at the screen saying, you know, where are we not right? It isn't a matter of the numbers and, and kind of knowing what's in there. It's more of what is this screen? Is this giving us the report that we want? Is this the same report Andrew can pull? And having that same technology conversation mm -hmm. when we're in Milton and Wakefield and then trying to bring that together. So, so, so we get bank home. statements, right? <laughs> we get working on it, huh? We get bank statements, right? Yeah. And the bank statements normally come with um, copies of the checks. So couldn't we just go back and and put in September, October, November, December off the bank statements so that we have a whole year under the ADS system? Do you want to do that? 
that's what Barbara tried to do, and that's where the system got messed up. Okay. And it's going to take a lot of work to fix it. So my preference is at this point, because it's, there's so much activity that's happened between January, I'm sorry, July and now, is get it balanced through February, February 29th, put the February 29th balances in ADS, and then go forward from there. You're going to have all the other activity in Quicken. And basically, when we get audited, they're going to be looking at June, and, and that's my goal is to have it all straightened out in ADS, functional in there by June. Well, we're going to know how much money's in there, but do we have a breakdown of what category the funds are in? I mean, is yes. there like a yes. environmental camp fund, and there's an eighth grade fund, and there's, there's one a for library class fund? class all the way down to kindergarten. There's a, a class for yeah. class. There's a category for So we class. have a breakdown of that. Yeah. yeah. We know what that is. Yeah. So what's the... Well, that's the important part, knowing that going forward. So I guess... I guess as long as they're going to, if they know the breakdown, they're going to start at the ADS, then we'll just wait till uh, Trish gives uh, into a monthly report, like, uh, you know, per policy. We are working we'll on it, I promise you. We are trying yeah. to get this so that it's right, because it, getting everything inputted correctly, if it's incorrect, we're like we're doing now, trying to go back and fix it, it's twice as hard than trying to get it yeah. right the first time, so... Any questions? Okay, uh, climbing wall. I asked for this to be put on the agenda because um, we've heard bits and pieces about the PTA possibly going to purchase a climbing wall uh, for the school. And when I was at the facilities meeting the other day, Joe told me that he put in a um, purchase order for moving the bleachers. And I was kind of like, I think someone's putting the cart before the horse, and somebody needs to be coming to the school board and asking if we want the climbing wall before we put in purchase orders for moving bleachers and doing work. I mean, we haven't budgeted for it, so what's he going to put? What did he put it under? He did it to make us aware, is what he said. But we don't look at purchase orders, so I'm not quite sure what the purpose of that was. Did you see that? I think there was more behind moving the bleachers than just moving them for the climbing wall. Um, and what I'll do is I'll talk to Bob and Joe and say, could you write this up for me to bring to the next board meeting so I can explain uh, a little more behind okay, why well, they were looking yeah. at moving them, because just vaguely, in, in, in passing in their conversations, I know they were talking about the fact the kids can't see the stage. Right. So we're right. only using part of the, the uh, bleachers mm -hmm. anyway. So, But it's not going to make any sense yeah. to move them down into the cafeteria section where the kids are eating because then they're going to be in the way of all the tables that go up against the walls. Right. So I think before anyone starts moving the cafeteria yeah. around, they need to come to the board first and yeah. see if we want to do that. Mm -hmm. I, I just don't want the the PTA moving forward with purchasing something right. and then find out that it can't be set up. Did Joe and, um, in the and building. Bob talk about that at the facilities meeting yes. when I wasn't there? Because there were parts I had to walk out of, so I wasn't sure if that was talked more about then. Okay. Yeah, because you did bring that up because they yeah. can't see the stage where the bleach is at. Yeah, now. and that's the only part I'd heard, but uh, I'll get the I'll get the full picture from Bob and Joe and find out what, what they were thinking about and see if that was part of the reason. Okay. So you have to wait for public Bob's comment. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Okay. okay. Actually, Bob's just remember your question. I can clarify, though. Yeah, well, okay. remember your question. Right. I'm sorry. I just didn't want the PTA spending money before it was approved to go in the... Right, yeah. Yeah. That makes sense. Okay. Uh, policies. This is our first reading. Okay, policy committee, you're up. We're working on Section I, which is um, instructional section. We missed several here tonight for first reading. Did you change anything, or at least? Uh, 
The health education and exemption from instruction is a new policy. Okay. 